Hey guys, it's CB Super. Today I'm going to show you five different masking techniques that you can use inside of the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Actually, I didn't create this idea. I got it from watching one of the Sunduck Films tutorials on five awesome masking effects for using inside of After Effects. Obviously, I'm not using After Effects right now. I'm going to show you how to do these effects inside of the DaVinci Resolve Fusion panel. But before we jump in, if you want to follow along, all of these can be found over on Pixabay. It's absolutely free. Feel free to log in, sign up, do whatever you got to do to get these videos. And links in the description for Sunduck Film. If you ever want to learn how to do more things in DaVinci Resolve, it's really good to look at After Effects tutorials and then just try to recreate them inside of the Fusion panel. You'd be amazed at how similar After Effects and the Fusion panel actually are. So let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve and we'll get started. Here we have very similar, some of them are the actual same video footages that he used in his video. I'm just going to show you how to do each one of these five different techniques inside of Fusion. The first one we're going to do is we're actually going to remove and replace something inside your footage. So let's jump over to the Fusion panel. Now if we were in the paid version or the studio version, you'd be able to do this using the Content Aware Fill over in the Color tab. Unfortunately, we're going to pretend that we're in the free version right now and we're going to do this in the Fusion panel. If you're interested in learning that, leave it down in the comments and I'll make a video on the Color Panel version of this at a later date. First thing I want to do is I want to actually create the mask that I'm going to be using. So in this instance, I'm not going to worry about the embers too much. I'm just going to mask out the fire. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the polygon mask tool. I'm going to come over here to the right hand side of the screen where the inspector is and I'm going to invert it. I'm just going to create a mask real quickly here. Maybe something like this. And I want to uncheck that invert and then jump over to the media page. And I'm actually not going to use this mask connected to the media in. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the media in shift space and I'm going to type in the word paint. I can spell that correctly, paint. And I'm going to take this polygon mask and I'm going to plug that into the paint node. I'm actually going to be cloning. So I need to clone an area. And in order to do that, I actually need to come back over here. I don't want any animation on this. So I'm going to come over here where it says right click for shape animation. And I just want to remove the polygon one polyline animation from it. And that way there's going to be no animation. Now I'm actually going to move this a little bit closer because that's a little bit too much and I don't want to have to recreate all of that area. I'm also not going to worry too much about the tree or the embers that are coming out. If you want to do that, you absolutely can. I am going to soften this mask just a little bit. I'm going to select all the points. Now on my keyboard, I'm going to hit shift S just to soften up those points. And now the mask will look a little bit nicer. So now the cloning part of it. So I want to make sure that my playhead is all the way at zero. And I want to make sure that I have enough frames to cover the entire scene. So we'll notice that is 1,214 frames long. So I'm going to want to come over to the paint node and where it says stroke duration, double click on this and just type in 1214. And now it will cover the entire Scene. In fact, I'm actually going to make it go extend one frame over, so 1215. All right, so our polygon is set, our paint node is set. I want to load this paint node into the viewer so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it with my left mouse button and I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto the viewer and that's going to load it in. Nothing has changed, but now you can at least see the circle cursor of your brush. So up in brush controls, I'm going to go ahead and size this brush up a little bit, maybe something like that. And over here in the apply mode, I actually want to click on the one just to the right of it. It's called the clone stamp. Let's go ahead and clone stamp it. And now you'll see there's a little X inside of our circle brush. In order to activate the area from which we will clone from, I'm going to hold down alt or option on my keyboard and I'm just going to click on a part that I want to select from. So I'm going to click on maybe this over here and I'm just going to start painting this area out. Maybe grab something from over here, paint out a little bit here. Grab a little bit more. You don't want to have too large a strokes so that it actually comes back into itself. So you just got to be a little bit careful. Maybe pick something from this side over here. And you'll notice that I started reintroducing those embers. And that's just because I came a little bit too far. So sometimes you, it's easier just to click little bits here and there. And that will help out a lot when you're moving. All right. So maybe I want to give it a little bit of a hard edge there. Now I want to press play to play through and make sure that none of it is popping through. That looks pretty good. It's pretty well set. There's a lot of other things that we can do with object removal. You'll probably notice that if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you could have done this very easily just using a content or fill inside of the color panel. 
but I'm assuming that you're using the free version as most of you guys are on the free version. So this is how you do it using the Fusion tab inside the free version of DaVinci Resolve. All right, next section, we're gonna show you how to do title mask reveal. With my playhead over the next scene, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion. So let's go ahead and drop down some text really quick. I'm just gonna grab a text node and I'm gonna plug it in to the composition by grabbing the output and I'm gonna drop it on the output of the media in node. What that's gonna do is that's gonna add a merge node. Now I'm gonna make sure that the media out is loaded into the viewer so everything I do, I can see. So let's go ahead and add some text. Can't really see that so let's go ahead and change the color maybe to something darker and let's size it up just a bit. All right, if this is our final rest point, then that's great. Let's go ahead and build the actual mask that we're gonna be using for. Just like in the Sunduck films where he used the lake as the masking point, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. So I wanna create a mask. I'm just going to create a mask here and I'm just going to mask out right where I think that the mask needs to go. Now I need to make this mask a little bit bigger. Something like that will work well. All right, and now we can plug this right into the text or we can plug it into the merge node. Both will do the exact same thing. The only difference is now we wanna make sure that we invert this mask. So if I was to grab this text and I start to move it down here, you'll see that it now it's now masked out from wherever the mask was. In this case, it's right here. So now it'll look like it's coming out from the lake, which is pretty cool. So how do we animate that? Well, it's really easy to animate we can either animate it inside of the actual text node, which is the way I'm gonna be doing it now, or we can also animate it using a transform node. I'm gonna show you the text node because it's a little bit easier and these things are actually already built into the text node itself. So if I come over to layout, you'll notice that there is a center transform here. If I want to animate that, it's real easy. What I like to do is I like to go to wherever I want the animation to finish out. If I want it to finish out right or maybe at one second, I'll go to either frame 30 or 24, depending on the amount of frames that you're working. In. And I'm just going to right click on this little diamond that is going to add a keyframe. And now I can come to the first frame and I can move this off frame so it's out of view. So now when I press play, you'll see that it automatically moves in using the mask. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and jump over to the next bit of footage, which is gonna be mass targeting. Now this is a very useful tool, especially in documentary filmmaking, where you can't show the faces of anybody who you don't have a consent form for. I'm gonna show you how to blur out specific faces. Now we're not going to be using an actual tracking node because 99% of the time, by the time it takes you to get a good track, you could have already manually finished this procedure. So the node that we're gonna be using is actually a blur node. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift space. I'm gonna just type in Gaussian blur. At a Gaussian blur, you will notice that we've blurred everything out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at the very beginning of this footage. And let's say I only wanna blur this lady's face out. Well, right now I'm blurring everything out, but if I was to create a mask, now I will only blur out the specific part of the mask that I want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over her face and I'm just going to size it down a little bit. And inside of the actual eclipse node, we can add a little bit of a soft edge. That's just gonna make it so I can still blur her face out, but it isn't necessarily overpowering. It doesn't have that hard edge. I'm not drawn to the actual mask, although it is a little bit jarring to just see people's faces blurred out. Sometimes you need to do this to protect their identity. So I wanna move this mask over time. It's really easy. Just go ahead and click on the ellipse and we can click on where it says center. We can go ahead and add another keyframe here. I can move forward maybe 20 or 30 frames, maybe to, to frame 40, I can move it adjust it, maybe move a few more frames, just grab this here on the screen, grab it, move it again, just keep moving it. And so something like this, this is where this uh, using a tracker node would obviously mess this up. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it here. Now let's say that as she moves forward, I'm going to turn this off as she moves in front. I can use this level control to actually turn it off. So I can go ahead and click on this. I can turn the, I can turn the blur or essentially the mask off and then I can go a few frames forward here and I can turn it back on. Now what will happen is as she moves forward, it turns off and then as she goes forward again, we can go ahead and we can turn it back on. But let's go ahead and move a few frames forward and as she starts to show again, we can go ahead and turn it back on. All right, and as she moves around, we're gonna to want to move this mast to match up with where she is. Now we don't have to key every single frame unless she's moving fast enough to where we do have to key each and every frame. So now you can see that as she moves around, the mask moves around with her. 
And so that's targeted tracking. Now you're, you're hand animating the actual track points versus if we were to use a tracking node in order to track her movement. Now, if you're interested in learning how to actually track people and add mass to the tracking, I have several other videos already on the channel showing how to do that specific technique. All right, so let's move on to the next technique, which is replacing things. In this specific instance, we're going to be using a mask to replace the sky in the background. Let's go ahead and jump over to this piece of footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. And I need to bring in the other piece of footage as well. I want to use this night sky here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this in and I'm going to drop it in right on top here. And I'm going to get rid of the media pool because I don't really need to see it. Now I can only see one of these at a time, but to get away with being able to see both of them at the same time is I can come over to the merge node and I can bring the blend down just a little bit. I want to make sure that I only see the sky. Now I can kind of move this around just so that the sky absolutely isn't effect, being affected. And I wanna size this up just a little bit just so it covers the entire area. We know that we're gonna to have to make a mask to follow and track on, on this background side. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take this merge and I'm gonna turn the blend back all the way up. I'm gonna bring up a second viewer and I'm just gonna load this piece of footage in the second viewer. And I'm actually going to mask while looking at this piece of footage but I'm gonna do it on the merge node. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and bring in a polygon mask again. And this time I don't need to invert it because I don't necessarily need to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna follow this mountain line. Now I'm going over the top because this is the part that I actually want to mask out. I don't want to mask out the bottom. Now we'll notice that by default, it looks a little jarring, right? But that's okay. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it just a little bit of soft edge, not too much. We don't want to go too crazy with this. Just hold down the command or control key and it's going to add just the smallest amount of soft edge. Now, the only problem is you'll notice that it's it brings the soft edge out further, which isn't necessarily what we want. If you want to eat away at the mask a little bit, a little tip is to add just a little bit of border width and that will drop it even more into the actual mask itself. Obviously, this doesn't match. These two scenes don't really integrate well with each other. Here we can see that it's a slightly different color. Maybe I just want to use this part of the footage right around here. Here. So right around frame 80, I can actually come into this media. I'm going to trim this to frame 80. And now you'll see that it actually starts at frame 8. And I'm also probably going to want to loop it because this particular piece of footage doesn't actually last long enough. Something like that looks a lot better. Now we need to add a little bit of different color correcting to make these scenes seem a little bit like they, like they actually could be believable to be seen together. Let's go ahead and we're going to color correct this scene, just adding a color corrector. But you'll notice that if we start colorizing it, we can quickly just move it into a more close color that matches just a little bit better, something like that. So that looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and come back into this polygon node and let's add a little bit more of soft edge, something like that. If I wanna see more of this sky, what I actually need to do is I can go ahead and I wanna reuse this polygon. So Control C and I'm just going to click off Control V and I'm also gonna reuse this media clip over here. And to do that, all I gotta do is I can grab another merge node. I can go ahead and click on this merge node and I can add another merge node after it. And the great thing about DaVinci Resolve Fusion Panel is that you don't need to bring in another media. I can actually reuse this same media clip just by moving this up, I grab this off here. It's basically pre-composed, so I don't have to pre-compose anything like I would in After Effects. I wanna, I wanna just put in a pipe router just to make it look a little bit cleaner. You don't have to do this part. If you hold down Alt or Option and then click anywhere using your left mouse button on the pipe here, that will add a little bit of a pipe router. And this is just how you can keep things clean a little bit. You can even add a second one if you wanna make it look even nicer. So now if we look at this, we see, okay, well that gives us the exact same thing that we had. Let me go ahead and take this polygon mask and now you'll see, okay, well that's great. That didn't really do anything, but if I come into this polygon mask and I hit invert, now you can see that we actually still have a good image. 
but this is the one where we can actually add the soft edge and now you'll see that the soft edge is only moving up and only affecting this portion of up, up here it's not affecting any of this so what we're doing is we're just bringing back some of the original footage so if you want to see what you're doing all you have to do is click on and off of this little red tab up here on the right and you can see with it and without it just just kind of blending it in using it as a compositing technique all right so that's pretty easy right we have one more thing to show all right here i have a footage it's going to be very similar to the last technique where if i press play you can see he's not moving so there will be no tracking or anything like that let's just say that it's too dark i want to brighten up maybe the interior of the vehicle but not the exterior of the vehicle i don't really need to do any type of tracking or anything like that so it doesn't really matter where I do this in the playhead. I'm gonna go ahead and create a color node. I know that I'm gonna to wanna to brighten this up, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift space. I'm gonna type in color, and I'm just gonna use the color corrector. Of course, you could also just grab it from right here. I'm gonna hit add, and I'm just going to turn up the gain just a little bit. I'm gonna maybe lift the shadows fairly decent, but I wanna lift up all of this and what i'm doing is i'm just bringing up a little bit of everything around it now this isn't a class on color grading or anything like that i'm just trying to see more inside the vehicle now unfortunately i've blown out everything inside of the windshield so in order to change that we're going to need to again come in here and we're going to do a very quick mask inside of the windshield because i don't want to affect any of that and if I click off here, you can see that it's somewhat of a harsh line. So let's go ahead and take this polygon, let's move it up. And I'm just gonna give it, again, holding command or control, give it a little bit of soft edge, maybe something like that. And then I just want to invert this. So now we can see that we've brightened up the inside there, but we didn't affect any of the outside. This is just a demonstration to show you how you can affect specific parts of your footage separately. Of course, you can do this inside of the color page, and some would prefer to do this inside of the color page, but I'm showing you how to do it in the Fusion page. So if you're working in Fusion and you need to just isolate something, this is how you do that. Of course, as it moves around, if the car was to move around, you would also need to move around the mask as well. So that's just something to take into consideration when you're choosing how you're going to fix your shots. All right, well, that's five tips from me. I hope you guys got something out of this video. Uh, keep in mind, there is tons of more useful techniques that you can do inside of the Fusion page using masks. This is just five simple tips. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.